the 30 days and 90 minutes model is designed to get your foundational content every month. Hello and welcome to episode 177 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. Whether it's been on this show or others like it, you've most likely been inundated with marketing and branding experts telling you that in today's world, content is king. And if you want to build a personal brand, you must be creating video content. Now, while that's absolutely true, it can be overwhelming to consistently create content that your audience finds value in. And that's where today's guest, Aaron Whitnish, founder of Content Only, comes in. With his 30 days and 90 minute content creation system, Aaron is helping entrepreneurs and thought leaders around the globe create an entire month's worth of content in just 90 minutes. Throughout our conversation, Aaron shares how the system works, tips for coming up with topics to create content around, and tools for repurposing content to extend its reach. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the all-new Smart Agents magazine has launched and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members-only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Aaron Whitnish. Be sure to stick around to see how you can access the 30 days and 90 minute content creation system for free. Well, really the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are and kind of just a a brief little overview of what you do. Yeah, well, my name's Aaron Whitnish. I'm in Australia, so I always joke a bit that we're in the future when I'm talking to someone over in the States. And my wife and I, we own and operate a content marketing agency called Content Only, and that's built around a model for creating 30 days content in 90 minutes. Uh, so that's essentially the shorthand version of what what I do. Right. And so, you know, honestly, for our audience, uh, real estate agents and brokers, uh, you know, the whole just the whole premise of being able to create that amount of content in that short amount of time is going to be a huge uh you know, I think something that is going to pique a lot of interest. So I'd love to just kind of dive in. Uh, what was it that, you know, kind of sparked this uh, idea for you guys? And what was it that you guys were trying to solve when putting together this program? Well, interestingly enough, we'll have it, we have another agency that specializes more in lead generation in the construction game. And how it came about was one of my clients is a bricklayer. And we were on a conversation on Zoom, just like we are now. And he said, I want to start building my personal brand up inside the local construction industry. I want to do some videos, but I'm not sure how to go about it. And I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, it's, it's going to be challenging for, his name was Mark, to sit in front of a camera and be able to do great videos without doing multiple takes and knowing what to say and been a little bit not like himself, knowing that he's been recorded, but very good at holding a conversation, very entertaining, funny, engaging. Said, mate, let's just try something. I've just got an idea. It came to me in the moment. Said, I'm just going to hit record while we're on Zoom here. And I'm just going to start asking you a bunch of questions. And I said, hey, how'd your business get started? What's the culture like? What were some of the challenges when you got going? What are some things that you do differently to other contractors in the industry? How do you support builders? And he just routed off these beautiful answers as if we were having a conversation at a bar. And I hit stop record. And then I sent it to our editor, Francois, in our agency. I said, just take this clip, just cut anything you think we could send back to Mark to use as content. And he sent me back a folder with about 12 clips in it. And he'd removed all the arms, R's, you knows, and all those parts of it. And they were anything from 20 to 40 second clips. And they were great. So we gave them to another person on my team and he put all the branding and the captions and all that onto the videos. And we sent them over to Mark and he was like 12 videos. And all I did was chat to you for 20 minutes. And I was like, I think we're onto something here. And then 
our purpose in Content Only, which is a much newer agency, it's less than two years old, is to make the internet a better place and doing that through content. So we want to create content with people that add value to the newsfeed, not people that bring scarcity and you know, clickbait and all that sort of thing. We thought, well, the best people to do that are people like agents and personal brands and consultants and advisors that can educate their audience add value, help them learn something. And we're like, well, they're, they're the people that this model's perfect for. And they're also usually great at having conversation around their expertise. So a Zoom with a bricklayer is how the idea for the model actually came about. That's awesome. And I really like, you know, the the idea uh, and the premise around uh, adding more value to the feed, I think is super important. Uh, and I And I do you know, think that for, you know, our audience, the real estate agents, they have such a great opportunity to educate their markets, regardless of if the person that is, you know, viewing that video at the time is in the market to buy or sell, but just being able to share their expertise and share uh, their knowledge with the general audience, I think is is always great. I think that's a really important point. And because you add value, even if that person isn't necessarily ready to buy they have friends, they have networks, mm-hmm. they have family. So if you've added value, if you've made their life better, they're going to start mentioning that to people in their network and who knows who's ready to buy in their community. So it's a great way to look at, hey, if I add value to people, where it's going to get around over time. Right. So, you know, with with Mark, uh, you went about and you just recorded this conversation that you had with him for people that are looking to start creating their content, uh, where should they start in the idea process? Because I think that, you know, even that just trips a lot of people up. What do I start talking about? This is the big one. I think we've all been there where you say, I'm going to make a video or write a post and you just sit there and you freeze and you go, I don't even know what to talk about. And this was the other part of the challenge that we had to solve because you also want to know what is your target audience searching for? What questions are they asking? What are they typing into, say, YouTube or Google when they're looking for information and content? And I think that's really important, especially as an agent, because that's going to help people make a buying decision, getting that knowledge and confidence to, to move forward. So the best tool when it comes to video content that we use to get content ideas is a tool called vidIQ. And what that does is it shows you how many, you can take a keyword for your niche or anything to do with real estate that someone you know, might search online and you just put that into the tool and it'll show you every single search that people are popping into the YouTube platform and how many people are searching for it, what the competition's like and it's color coded. So if you ever see a green, you go, oh, that's an opportunity that not many people are competing on in terms of content and you'll get hundreds of ideas in 20 seconds and you just put a checkbox next to the ones that you feel you can add value to and then you just export it into a csv file or a spreadsheet and then you've got your content ideas ready to go and then the trick is you have a partner that you can have the conversation with so whether it's another real estate agent a colleague a family member friend someone that you have a good rapport with and have a very natural comment someone like yourself who's very good at having conversations and the best thing to do is to start off with a, you jump on Zoom, you jump on Google Meet, you jump on Teams, whatever platform you are happy using. And you usually start off with a story. So you share a story about a listing or a client situation just to get in the conversation mode and sort of get out of your head that you're recording content. And then you have the person that has your content ideas from that list, just start asking you questions from that list and you just answer them. You don't have to worry about messing up or losing track of thoughts because it's getting recorded and that then goes to repurposing step, which is part of the process. So that's how you can come up with content ideas and not have to think about it. Right. And I really like that idea of, you know, using your, your partner or somebody else in your office to to do those interviews, because it really is, it, it becomes just that conversation where uh, I think you do uh, take down those barriers and you just come across so much more naturally also. That's the key to it, because we all can have conversations. And like you and I have only met in the last 15 minutes or so, and we're just having a conversation here. I I've completely forgotten that we're on a podcast and we're recording. We're just talking to each other. The same thing happens. And so you, your most natural self. So you come across really authentic. You have all the right afflictions, the same way that you deliver in everyday life. So you get this really, I guess, authentic version of content rather than if you're trying to do a scripted video, staring down the camera, worried that you didn't say it right and, and being awkward. It's just such a beautiful way of 
being able to show up as you and attract the tribe that actually resonate with you as a person. Right. And I think, you know, for real estate agents, even if you know, there's so many different ways to, to go about doing this, you could do the Zooms and the Google Meets and, and those kind of things, but you could also set up a phone and just have somebody in your office you know, ask you those questions. And now you have, you know, maybe a, a slightly different angle on something that you would. And there's so many great ways to do that. I really like that idea. And it's something that you could, you could do once a month. Absolutely. And that's a, I'll add to what you just said. So to get really good quality video, when you're doing this process, the iPhone or smartphone setup, depending on what device you're using is one of the best ways to do it because short form content is what most platforms are favoring in the algorithm. So you can set it up in your vertical portrait mode and get really high quality footage that's ready to go. And you can have a little lapel mic that you can get on Amazon for $50 and do the same thing. Just have someone there prompting you and you can, if you want to move and change the background or change outfits a couple of times while you're going through the process, it can just mix up the variety of the video. So that's another really good way to get quality content. Right. And when, you know, once you get your your list of ideas, um, you know, it, do you normally uh, you kind of instruct people to kind of go through those ideas and collect their thoughts and kind of write down not necessarily definitely not scripts, but more like bullet points that they want to touch on? We've found that with most people, we haven't done that at all because they get in their head too much and they're trying to search. So the fact that we can just keep recording and it doesn't matter if they can't answer a topic or they haven't got a good response to it, you just keep moving on. So we tend to just go with the spontaneity and most people that are experts at their craft won't have any challenges asking the questions. But if it was something where you had to be more detail orientated with the types of ideas that were on that list, then you might have a few dot points that you've got for that process. By setting out to just even, you know, capture the content this way. I think it takes away a lot of those, uh, those challenges and some of the, you know, honestly, just the overwhelm because, you know, I know we have folks that we work with and they'll sit down there and they'll try to write 20 scripts. Well, you just, it takes, it could take days to write all those scripts out if you wanted to make it perfect. And by doing that, you are, you're cutting so much time out and you, boom, you're done hit record and 20 minutes later, you're totally done. Exactly right. And the, that leads nicely into the next step in the process, which we call repurposing, which is where you get that footage and someone then turns it into the video clips, but you can also get it turned into text. So there's a lot of AI tools that do this, but rev.com is the one that we use. So you just hand the video file over to rev.com and in eight minutes or so, you'll get your full transcript back and then you've got all that text ready to rewrite and you've got your written post. So there's so many ways to be efficient, not sit there for hours on the keyboard, trying to punch out uh, posts and scripts and things of that nature. And kind of talking about some of those other tools. I mean, nowadays there are so many uh, editing tools also to put the captions on things. I mean, things have gotten so much easier than it was even just two years ago. Yeah. And the funny thing is regard if you're starting out from scratch, there are AI tools that can do versions of repurposing on, on a budget. If you're further along and you want a different level of quality or you have access to an editor or a team, then you can get a different level of standard. So it doesn't matter what starting point you're coming from. You can have no budget and just a, a phone and be starting there and find a way to utilize this system, or you can be years into your game and have a team and everything and, and use the system as well. So there's no barrier to entry uh, with all the technology and tools that we have available at the moment. Yeah. What, uh, and, and, you know, talking about that repurposing, and I really like that idea of uh, taking that recorded video content and turning each one of, I mean, each one of those videos can turn into a short blog that you post. And then, you know, you, you make that a, a uh, text post with an image or something like that. There's so many different avenues that you can go down with that one video out of the 20 that you shot. Exactly. And the fact that you're using content that your audience is looking for is very powerful. If you turn it into a blog post, a social media post, a YouTube short, a reel, because you know the audience 
is actively trying to solve that problem or get that information. So it's got a much better chance of performing than if you're trying to wing it and create content on the fly. So there's so many different ways that you can take that one effort and even take the audio and, and use it on audio platforms and just redistribute it wherever your audience is or wherever you're building a presence and profile online. Right. When people are, uh, you know, getting into creating, especially social media content and the, the YouTube content, one of the things that I think a lot of people get caught up in is, God, I hope, you know, this has got to get a ton of views right out of the gate. What are you, what's your uh, tips or just thoughts on the amount, you know, just posting consistently and getting as much content out there or having that one that takes off? I'm big on having a habit built first and foremost. I think that's a challenge. Everyone goes to the stats and it can be really discouraging early days, yeah. even podcasting, things of that nature. Most people have quit by episode number three. And mm. if you look at the stats, you're going to get discouraged and disheartened. You're not, most people are not going to get a large uplift in followers. They're not going to get a lot of views early on. So if I'm talking to someone that's just starting out, I said you're better off building the habit first and foremost and your content's probably not going to be the highest quality in the beginning because you're trying something out that you haven't done before. So in my opinion, the best time to actually have content takeoff is when you've got a library and you've got yeah. an account built up because what happens then if someone discovers you, they'll go back through all your other content. If you pop on day one or two and you've only got a couple of pieces of content out there, there's nothing else there for them to find. So I always go, just think when you put something out, just one or two people need to hear this right now. And that's always the mindset that I have, even having created thousands of pieces of content now myself. I'm just like only one or two people really need to hear this right now. And that's who this piece of content's for. And if more people find it, that's just a bonus. So it's building the muscle and the habit of doing the content and just showing up once a month and recording your video and repurposing it. And then over time, you can start looking at quality, looking at the stats once you know that you're consistent with it. And then you can say, okay, this worked really well. We've got a lot more views and engagement when we talked about this topic, let's do more of that. And hey, when we talk about this over here, we don't get a lot of traction. So maybe we'll talk about that less. Right. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I a couple of weeks ago, I did a, a podcast with a gentleman. He was all about, um, you know, driving your SEO search up through video. And we got on the topic of just getting comfortable on camera to begin with. And that whole idea of you're only there, you're, you're talking to that one person. I think it it fits well with even the stats on things because for a real estate agent, you're just looking, you're, it's that one sale you're looking for. You're not, we're not trying to sell the entire world on our market. So, you know, by showing up and getting, getting in front of the right person at the right time and having that library for them to go through and you, you build that trust up with them, not even knowing you, I think is super important. Yeah. Yeah. We, the, I think the invisible hand terminology is the best way to look at that. So there'd be so many people that will go have a look at you that you don't know are even doing that. So referrals, people that have mentioned you and what they find and don't find influences their trust and desire to engage with you as an agent. So if you've got a beautiful library full of content on your social media profiles, that's going to increase someone's trust and desire to want to engage you as an agent and to work with you. The opposite is also true. If there's nothing there, they're probably going to have less trust and less desire. So it does this passive role in helping you build business, converting sales that most people forget about. So just by having content there, even if not a lot of people are seeing it, the people that you do get in front of in your business are still going to go check that out. And if they're getting value and they can see that you're an expert and knowledgeable about your listings, about your area and the properties that you sell and the market, then there's a very good chance that that's going to help them move forward working with you. One of the other things I think that's really great about, um, you know, your system and creating the 30 days of content each month, you know, in this short amount of time is it, it allows you, like once you already have that, you know, bank of content created, it allows for that spur of the moment content to not be so overwhelming, like, oh gosh, you know, I really want to do this thing about my new listing or this new event that's coming up. But I also have all these other things I need to take care of. That's a best point. So the 30 days and 90 minutes model is designed to get your foundational content every month. So you know you've got these, say, 20 to 30 pieces of content in both video and written format that are consistently going to go out 
then you can update your stories. If you've got something to share on the fly, there could be a trending topic that's taking off that you've got an opinion or want to have commentary about that could take off because it's popular. There's lots of conversations going on. So it gives you the freedom to do whatever you want on the fly, knowing that, hey, I'm still going to be visible 24 seven because I've got all this content created from the model that's ready to go each month. Right. And so, you know, we're talking a lot about, you know, creating those shorter, you know, 30 to 60 second video clips. Why is the short form content so important for, uh, you know, people that are looking to build up their personal brands? So if you look at how people consume content now and the average attention span of a human being, which last time I checked is 8.25 seconds. So you've got all these competing pieces of content in the feed at any point in time. You've got these very short attention spans. So short form content is a way to give people the style of content that can get you on the radar in the format that they like to consume. So over the last, let's call it five or six years, there's a generation that's come through that have grown up just on content. And the platform TikTok is largely responsible for mm-hmm. making this short form transformation, particularly with the videos, the reels and the, the shorts on YouTube. And a lot of videos get played without sound now. So that's why you have to have the captions and the movement. And that's also why the moving screen is really important because if you've only got 8.25 seconds, you've got to have the movement on the screen to retain someone's attention. So short form is a great way to put a very low risk time investment for someone to get introduced to your brand. And then when they discover you that way, they see you a few times. That's when, if you've got some long form content, like you've been a podcast guest or you do your own podcast or some longer videos, they'll start to move across over to that longer content where they can build a deeper relationship with you and listen to you for longer listening sessions. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for real estate agents, just, I mean, honestly, I think one of the easiest ways to go about doing this would almost be to host a monthly podcast themselves with, you know, maybe somebody inside their office or bring in some of the, you know, market experts, whether it be, you know, in other professions, but they can talk about, and, you know, not only are you getting those shorter pieces, but then you can, you have your, your podcast episode, you know, your longer form videos, all that stuff, all the blogs. I mean, there's so much you can do and cut out, even if they just did one 30 minute podcast a month. In a perfect world, that's the exact model that I would tell everyone to do because you got your long form and you can then repurpose that. You don't need to necessarily do that process where you're going through all the content ideas because that podcast episode in itself can tick all those other boxes. But the stats suggest that most people are not going to show up and be consistent with the podcast. So that's why we have to come up with a, another strategy. So I'll talk about the repurposing because I haven't dived into that. So you can take a podcast episode. There's some... If, like I said, if you're on a budget and you're just starting out, any long form video, it could be you've gone through this, the step that we talked about with the research and you've done the session, the conversation, ready to go. So a tool like Opus Clip, and there are many others like it. So I think it's opus.pro as a URL. You can just put it into that. You don't have creative control over exactly what clips are going to be cut. It'll intuitively cut clips. But if you're just starting out, that'll cut clips for you and it will add the captions and and so forth, you'll have to drive it a little bit and edit it. The only downside is if you had specific topics, it might not cut them to the model. But like I said, if you're just starting out and you're on a budget, that can be a really great entry into the repurposing process. Number two is if you don't have access to an editor, any freelancing site like Upwork, you can just go on there, find an editor and give them your podcast episode or that uh, conversation that you had in, from step one and just give them the instructions. Hey, can you cut 12 plus reels or shorts from this conversation from each question in the interview or each part of the podcast and put these branded clips with your colors and your fonts and so forth on them. And that's how you turn around your short form content from that one effort, that one podcast episode or that one conversation a month. Right. And that's where, you know, so uh, we do, I do all the editing and everything for our stuff, but I, I use all of these tools that, you're, you know, Rev is our main, you know, my main thing. And, uh, you know, if, if I were somebody that didn't do the editing, I could take my transcript from this conversation, you know, highlight 
the sections from the transcript and pass it off to an editor and they could put all the captions and everything on there. And it's really, it's so inexpensive when you do use an Upwork or a Fiverr or something like that. Exactly right. It caters to wherever you're at in the journey. And a lot of those platforms, you can actually set your own budget that, that you're working with. So you've got everything from AI tools that can do a version of it that are really inexpensive all the way up to having a very high-end editor if you're at that level that can do it to a T exactly how you want it with customized B-roll and all different angles and that sort of thing. So the great thing is there's no excuse not to do this and, and money is certainly not an excuse not to start doing content, repurposing it and building your profile online for, for agents. Right. So, um, you know, you obviously, you kind of had your first case study with Mark and he was blown away by it. Tell me about some of the other, you know, some of the other reactions that you've gotten from people that you've worked with uh, to kind of show them how easy it is to fill their content calendars. Well, the funny thing is everyone gets off the conversation and goes, oh, that was terrible. Uh, it's the same <laughs> reaction every time. And then you go, don't worry about it because that's why there's editing. And then we give it to Francois on our team and we're working with the client. He just mines the gold. So he knows what pieces of content we're looking for based on the questions that we've asked. And his job is to go through each of those and cut the best possible anywhere from sort of 20 to 60 seconds. And even if it's mer merging some of that together to get this really engaging, impactful piece of content. So every time we send it back, they're like, oh, it was, so it wasn't that bad. It's actually, that's actually pretty good. I was like, well, that's the magic of editing. You, you remove out all the, the stops, the pause, the losing track of thought, the ums, the ahs, all those parts of the process to get this really engaging clip that's perfect for your audience to get a snippet of value from you. Right. So, so I'm, I'm guessing, so you guys, you, you do the interviews with the folks and that's how that, you know, so that content kind of, uh, mining starts happening? Yeah. So like I said, there's ways that people can DIY, do it themselves, but we have a service of people that are usually up and running and established to an extent that it's more beneficial for them just to use our team and our resources and go, I'll just show up and talk to Aaron for, for 40 minutes. And I know I'm going to get back this folder with all these videos and all these written posts ready to go. For, so for people that establish that just makes a lot of sense because their time in the marketplace is worth a lot. And if they can repurpose all that time back into income generating opportunities and just get all their content handed to them from having a great chat with myself, for them, that's a really convenient offer. So we do that. We do the interview. We have our editors that cut all the clips and then put in all the branded captions with people's fonts, their branding colors. If they want the B-roll and the emojis, they add all that in. And we go back and review it all, make sure everything's accurate. And then we read shells in our team as our copywriter. She'll, she'll take that rev transcription and she'll do the same thing. She'll mine for all the gold nuggets mm -hmm. and turn them into written posts to hand back to the client. So when our job is to have almost a set and forget process to just hand over all this content for the month ahead for our clients. So that's how we do it. So our team's kind of like, you don't have to build your own team. You just leverage what we've already got in place. That's the mindset that we have with it. Where all are you, um, you know, where are your clients coming from? Are they coming primarily from Australia? Are they coming, you know, cause honestly, this is, I mean, we're, you know, like you said, you're in the future for me. And that's the beauty yeah. of the zooms and everything like that is you really can do this with anybody across the world. Correct. So as long as you can jump on a Google Meet, which is where we do it, we can work with you. So we've started to have, it's a relatively new model that we only started sort of the back end of, of last year. So all our clients that we started with were Australian based, which was great. But now we're having conversations with people in the States. I uh, had a chat with uh, Andre in London on Tuesday night, and he seems very bullish about this model. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you can jump on Google Meet. And the reason why we use Google Meet is it goes straight into Google Drive, the recording. So it's very easy for us from there to send it over to the editors, send it over to Rev and have it all backed up. So there's a little tip. If, you've, if you use Google Drive and that's one of your systems, then maybe Google Meet is a really good platform for you to run this model on. So yeah, it's, it's a, a model that we think will have clients in most continents around the world. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it really is, you know, because I know just for myself, like it, it really seems like what 
we're already doing for the podcast, you know, you're, you're scaling up and, and doing for other people that, you know, just don't have the teams themselves or the video editing expertise that you're able to do this and bring, uh, you know, this kind of content creation to really anybody. Yeah. And I think that the other peace of mind thing that you, you do get, if you do work with someone that's built the systems and built the team is that quality control. So there's a, an assurance in the back of your mind, hey, they've got the team there. They've done this many, many times. They, they know what they're doing. So it's like myself as a business owner, I pay people that are better at, than me at doing things so I can put my time back into the areas that I'm actually good at. And that mindset is what helps you grow a lot faster. If you can get that time back and you can put it back into getting more listings, FaceTime with clients, following up for referrals and... Yeah, you're really focusing on the activity that grows the agency as an agent, then that's a much, yeah, you leverage your time as much as you can because that's how you're going to grow much faster. Right. Absolutely. Before we wrap up, for anybody that's listening to this that, you know, is interested and, in, you know, starting their, uh, you know, their 30 day content uh, creation, how can they get in touch with you? Well, we have the system available for free at contentonly.au. So it's an Australian website. So you can go there and download it. And in there, we walk you through the entire process. So anyone can utilize it from starting from scratch, doing it themselves. And if people did want to leverage our team for that, then there's just links to have that conversation. So we give away the, the system for free to everyone. So contentonly.au and you can go access that anytime. Absolutely. And we'll definitely put that in the uh, episode description so that everybody can uh, get access to that. And I, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us today. I think, you know, just uh, for our audience to just be able to hear, you know, how the system can work. I think it, it, it should help with some of the overwhelm of creating that content and always having to uh, be present with their sphere of influence. Uh, thank you, Michael. I think for agents too, it's very important to have people hear your voice, see your face and video is a great way to accelerate the relationship. So if you're an agent, start creating content and just get better as you go because it's going to really help your business down the track. Awesome. I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us today. Likewise, Michael. It's been a pleasure. I really want to thank Aaron for joining us today and think that this system is a no-brainer for real estate professionals and entrepreneurs to begin consistently creating content without feeling overwhelmed by the process. Remember, go to contentonly.au to download the full 30 days and 90 minute content creation system. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.